Welcome, everybody. We are in November and Miss Liz is back. I don't know how much Miss Liz is present this morning, but we're, we're going to talk a good subject this morning, mental health. And I have the returning guest from season three, Adam Duvall. He is the founder and the producer of Mental Health Warriors. Uh, he's a podcast host. He's an advocate. He's a father. And he's got some updates. He's got some personal updates and he's got some updates about the Mental Health Warriors and that for the new season that's coming in 2024. So I'm going to get Adam in here and we're going to talk a little bit. And for the viewers that are just finding out about Mental Health Warriors, we're going to bring a little bit of that back just so we can give you some upgrounds on that. And then we're going to get deeper into Adam's story because Adam shared a story last season. If you want to see that part, part one, you can check that out on the YouTube channel for Miss Liz. So let me get Adam in here and then we're just going to spill a tea because me and Adam, that's what we do. We just spill and we just make a mess and I'm going to get him in here so he can give you some good updates. Welcome, Adam. Hi. See, Adam is like a friend. Adam is no longer a guest. Adam is a friend. He he's he's like a big brother. Like you know, we just pick on each other and we poke and you know we just go at it. So, Adam, welcome back to tea time. Uh, if my throat kicks in and out, don't worry about it. I'll just take a sip of tea over here. Uh, I I'm going through a little bit. If anybody would like to know about that, they can check out Miss Liz's Facebook page and all that good stuff. But but yes. today I want to talk about the mental health. Uh, Adam, uh, I want to get into the updates first, and then we're going to get into a little bit about mental health warriors, because since being on season three, something has happened to you and your wife. How's that? <laughs> <Magic>. <laughs> so would you care to share what the update is? Because I'm super yeah, excited. Yeah, well, well, obviously, um, I've got a psychology degree. I've got... Um, a new baby um, and I'm just living life. Yeah, you have a nice bouncy little boy and he looks so much like you, Adam. Like I was looking at the pictures yesterday and I was like, oh my God, he looks like his daddy. Stalking my profile again. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> it's just what I do, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, Adam, I want to get into a little bit of your story just to give the viewers and listeners uh, that are listening that may be new uh, a little bit about you. So I want to go back into when you were a little boy, who were you and who are you now as a grown man? How far into a little boy do you want to know? Go way back. So we get to know. A okay, little then. Bit well, who was I? That's a very good question because I ain't got a clue who I was. No identity, no voice. Um, didn't know who I was, didn't know what I want. And let's just say I'm lucky to be here today. And now I've got now I've got a voice, I've got an identity, and um people are still trying to shut me up and they're not working. 
<laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Nobody's going to shut Adam up. Adam is a voice and a nice, loud voice for mental health. Hi, Annette. Um, I, Adam, I really appreciate what you do for the Mental Health Warriors. So for the viewers out there, tell them a little bit about what Mental Health Warriors is all about and when it started. Mental Health Warriors, it, it's plain and simple. Obviously, the next part of it, of course, um, we're, just, we're just a bunch of dysfunctional people with our own experience, our own story, and we use that to bring guests from all over the world onto our podcast, and we just... We just go as it is. Uh, we just get stories out there because we want to get these little voices into one big voice so then we can eradicate that stigma. And we have a comment from Annette. She is one of the warriors, and you can check out her program. I believe her program is on Mondays, correct? No, no, it's actually on Wednesdays, uh, once a fortnight. But, but obviously she's actually thinking about changing the date, so that's actually an update. So there's lots and lots of changes coming to Mental Health Warriors. You have some new yes. shows that have started, some new warriors that are coming to the table. Yes. Yeah, we've got um, we've obviously got Stephen Smith. Um, he's obviously from Sarasota, Florida. He's obviously, his show's called LWN Life with Nature, where obviously he talks about the importance of getting outside. Um, and obviously he brings the sunrise up with you. Um and obviously, we've got starting in two weeks. We've got Nancy Nance, who we all know her. Uh, she's going to bring joy back to people's life. And yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited that Nancy's on board because Nancy is one of my Sacred Heart Rising sisters. So I met Nancy in person a couple of years ago. So Nancy's. Oh, that Nancy's, could be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy's like a big sister. She, you know, we watch out for each other, all of us Sacred Heart sisters. Uh, uh, I believe I met Nancy, it was in 2018 or 2019. I'm not sure. Uh, yes. I think it was the second time I flew, not the first time because I'm not a big mm -hmm. flyer. So. Yeah, then also my, my show, well, mine, Andrea Evans and Andrea Mason's, our show, uh, we're now booked up. Take away Christmas period. We're booked up now until second week of July next year. Awesome. See, and this is what we have to do, right? We have to get ahead of the, of the game because if we stay behind, yes. then we're falling behind. And if we want to be yeah, examples, exactly. we got to stay up ahead. Uh, you yep. know, and sometimes That's being right. that role model is hard. Uh, yeah. So, Adam, you have you ever had a show by yourself? No. That's one of the questions that just came in. Has Adam ever had a show by himself? <laughs> I think. No way. Eh? I don't think so. I think you've always had somebody. Who, who asked that? Uh, it came in by Twitter. I, I don't know. A lot of that, a lot wow. of people don't verify, right? And and we we can't put them up unless they verify on streamer because of policies and that. So ah uh, no no I've not I've not had a show me on no not not as I can think no yeah that that was a good question Should because I? I never thought of that I was when I seen that I was like what because I'm Should trying to. That? I'm trying to, I think you should. Why? Like, why not? Do it at the Adam hour. <laughs> I'll dance. No, mom. No, but this is what it's all about, isn't it? We bring fun to mental health. That's what we're supposed to. Why take it serious? Exactly. And and that's why we got to break the stigma, right? And the discrimination because every, everyone has this look on mental health that you got to be depressed and upset. Yes, depression is not always easy and it's hard. You know, we have our moments. Uh, you know, I'm just flashing up some of the comments that Annette's putting up here. She's like, being a part of the Warriors has helped change and improve my mental health. Uh, he has his show with Andrea, another the Mental Health Warriors. But I don't, yes, I yes. don't think you've ever done one by yourself because before you were no. doing one with, uh, you were doing a group one as well a couple of years ago. No, I've, I've always been on like one-on-one -on -one doing it with someone or as a panel. 
Yeah, that might be something to look into for the new year at our Adam. So, Adam, I want to get into your schooling. You've been doing a lot of schooling. And if anybody pays attention and they follow Adam online, they can see that he is doing amazing. You're getting amazing scores. You're passing all your tests and all of that. I believe you've only had to do one or two over. But, you know, we need those uh, moments where we have to redo them, right? Because sometimes we rush. And yeah, yeah. This is my third attempt at doing GCSE maths. Um, obviously, school, I got a G. Then, obviously, doing it last year, um, where I, I only got an F, which obviously that is not good enough to me because, for one, I was a bit of a character in class well. That's the first time I've ever been a character. And the secondly, is, um, is, is, yeah, I just never covered the letter, the areas of maths, uh, what I did last year. But obviously, I'm redoing that all again this year. And, yeah, just keep going. Because my aim is, the reason I'm doing GCSE maths, again, yeah, people's going to think, you're too old to do maths. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're never too old. And uh, because I want to get a C, a grade C in maths because then I can go and do GCSE English because once I've got my English, my aim is to get my PhD in psychology. That is my aim. That's my target. And no one's going to stop me getting that. They're going to try, but they're going to fail. Simple as. Well, it's your goal, right? It's your dream. So nobody can stop any anybody's goal or dream, right? You just push through it. Yeah. You, you know, you always have those naysayers. You know, why are you doing it now? You're too old for that. You know, you could have done that 20 years ago. You know, and people are graduating from school in their 80s and 90s. Like Exactly. You know? And and this is what I mean, please, is that saying, that old saying, life starts when you're 40. I just think that's a lot of rubbish. Life starts when you choose for it to start. And Adam says that because Adam's not 40 yet. <laughs> no, not just that, because it's the truth, though. Hey, I'm still 21, but my body's telling me different. Yeah. So, Adam, I want to talk about the children. Uh, you have autistic uh -oh. children. So how did, how is that at home? And I want to get into the school systems. I know that a lot of people are like, Miss Liz, don't even go there with Adam. School but I do though. want to go there with Adam because Adam has really changed his look on schools. Some changes not all but some changes because adam you you realize that you had to take a toll back in order to to make your voice a little stronger you know sometimes we have to take that one step back and then go forward because i have seen that in the last six months and you you have taken that voice a little back but you're coming with more facts and information more energy yeah in a good way and that's a good way because before it was like attack, 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 and blame. It, 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 you were on defense, right? So you took that step back. I noticed that. I pay attention to Adam. I pay attention to a lot of my guests. And I realized that you noticed that because a lot of people have spoken to you and said, Adam, in order to make that impact, sometimes, you know, you got you to gotta back up a bit and then come forward, not boom. Uh, there was somebody that told me a couple weeks ago, Miss Liz, you're at a 500 and the rest of the world is at a 10. So could you come at a 150 maybe? <laughs> so I think well, that's where you were, Adam. You were like me. You were like just gun hole and you wanted to really just. That's what makes me and you alike, isn't it? We're just straight to the point. But I'm thinking logically now, what, the reason I was doing that before is it wasn't me doing that. That was my trauma coming out because, yes, I was dealing with it externally, but I forgot to deal with it internally as well. But but now I've done that. Well, now I'm still doing it. Um, yeah, I am still dealing with it internally. I am just thought, you know what? Yes, the people. Do I like the education system? No, I don't. Do I think I'll ever trust them? No, I won't. <laughs> Because end of the day, they are the putting barriers in front of our children. They are like, like for example, what I'm currently dealing with now with, and and this obviously links into your question about autism is Lucas, our, our eleven year old 
I call him a smart ass because he is. Um, he he obviously is exceeding in mathematics, and and obviously I believe he's ready for college. At Eleven years old, I believe he is. Other subjects, yeah, he's at school age. He is, and I'm trying and trying and trying to find someone to go and assess him to, just to see what level he's at. I like obviously the school are not doing that. Uh, the school is at. Then I've spoken with colleges, uh, like even the college I go to. I've spoken to them, and they're saying no, he's too young. So I'm like, then I rang a university to see if they can do something. No, he's too young. But now, now I've finally got somewhere where obviously um, from talking to the college where they've sent me links and they've actually offered an assessment, which is going to happen tonight, oh. just just to see what's going on, uh, which obviously I, I've booked. And, yeah, we're just going from there, which he's got that in about four hours. Oh, wow. See, I, 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 took, I, a two hour, I took a two-hour nap and I missed something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's but but yeah, it's if people say raising autistic children is easy, then you have not got a clue what autism is. You have not got a clue. Autism is a really really challenging thing for you uh, because it doesn't just impact you; it impacts your entire family, including themselves. Do I believe? Um, do I believe? They know how to be good, yes, but at the same time, I know that they're struggling. They are struggling, and all we can do is just be there. Half the time, I don't know how to communicate with our children when when they're in crisis. I don't know, and that's my that's my truth. I don't know. So, like for example, our daughter when she's in crisis, um, obviously Kerry normally goes to her, and I'm like. No, don't. Just leave her. If she wants to trash a room, throw things downstairs, just let her. Because at the end of the day, it comes to it where once she's done that, she then slowly calms down and then she comes straight to you. Let her come to you. She's, she's like a little deer where you have to wait for her. So have you ever found out why the outbursts happen? Why the what? Why the outbursts? Like, why why do they get so aggressive that they have to, you know? Um, it could be a ma ma uh, many factors to why they get aggressive. It could be the fact that they're overstimulated. It could be the fact that they're bored. It could be the fact that, uh, yeah, fair enough, bored, may it may be an excuse, but it's not an excuse if you think about it. Yeah, I know many of us come up with excuses. So oh, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. But in reality, the reason they're saying they're bored is because they don't know how to, they, they don't know, they don't, they don't understand their own emotions. They don't. And I think that's for many autistic individuals. So if we actually slow down, and I can't believe I'm actually going to say this for the first time in my life, but you have to show a little bit of patience, <laughs> which I don't oh my have. <laughs> Is this guy going to fall? <laughs> <laughs> yep, you have to. A bit of patience, a bit of compassion, and you have to just slow down and just listen to them. Listen to how they feel, because for the first time, when I took my son outside uh, out, I was talking to him about how he feels, and he was opening up, which he has never, ever done in his life. Never. So instead of actually, when they're in crisis, that is a bad time to go and talk to them. Bad time. Wait till they've calmed down. So we have a question here for you, Adam. As a father of autistic children, how does that affect your mental health? Very much. It really does. Um, obviously, I, I do admit I have had really bad days uh, where there's been many times when not just Kerry, but me as well, I've actually gone into another room and started crying. I've done that many times. Um, even even when 
even when they're crying and they're screaming and even when our new baby is crying you just have to just get up i know it sounds selfish and you should never leave a baby unattended but you have to make that time for you as well so that's why i just went into the room for a couple of minutes just cried took a brick breather and then just came back in that's what i did because sometimes you have to you have to do that to keep yourself sane Otherwise, you're going to lose your mind. I really suggest everybody go and check season three, Adam Duvall's Tea Time, because, Adam, you have really immensely changed since last season. You've become calmer. You've become more alert and more patient. And, yes, I'm looking for this guy to fall because Adam doesn't have a lot of patience. But lately, Adam, in the last God, six months – you have really changed. You have really grown. I have seen that grow in you. And we have even had that connection where we, we where we had had conversations and said, Liz, are you like you check on me a lot? You're like, Liz, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, I don't like when people ask if I'm okay, because if I'm okay, then I'm not okay. Because when I say I'm okay, I'm not okay, guys. If I say oh, I I'm fine, that. then I'm good. If I say I'm okay, I'm not good. And it's just my way of shutting people down because i don't know how to yeah yeah because that that's that, that's what it is with me is when other people asking you if you're okay yes you don't like it but then they just stop they just stop that conversation but with me i persist with it because i know you're not okay yeah and there's yeah. been times when you've opened up to me yeah and, and you're and, like and you're like adam stop talking just let me rant <laughs> But there are times, you know, because I have BTD and DID, sometimes I, I disassociate from my body and I, I go into another part, I, you know. Uh, and it's not because I want to forget. It's just I don't remember when I'm in that stage. And my body does that dur during stress and trauma uh, attacks and that, uh, you know. I'm, I'm here, but I'm not here. It's like you're in an air bubble and you're watching over yourself and you know that you want to say this, but you're not there. So you can't say it. So your voice is saying, no, say this, but your body's actually saying something else. And you're like, how can I do this? Like, how can, you know, and we talked about this a little bit on your show as well, the conversion disorder where my body shuts down and sometimes. Which episode? Because I've done it twice. Yeah, we, I've been on mental health worries a few times, and that's what we do is we, you know, we support one another, uh, and that yeah. goes a long way as well. Especially when someone is living with mental health, it's okay to say, "Hey, I got your back. Come on my show. Take a break. Let me flip the table on you. Let me serve a different way." You know, because exactly, and and I've even offered for the warriors to come and support tea time as well, where it is because. Because obviously, I know you said you haven't got time, but come on, we've all got time, Liz. We all do. And this is I why I know. said, and, I, and I'm even going to put it out there to the universe right now, and I hope the next watching this right now still, is have Miss Liz and Tea Time come onto the Warriors and have her on show. So that opportunity is still there, and it's not going away. Well, like I said, at this time, it's, it, it's too much for me. And I have to be able to say that, you know. But it, that doesn't mean that in the future, in six months, I'm not like, Adam, okay, I'm ready. You know, uh, right now I am going through a lot of stuff. So it's not because I don't have the time. It's just it's too much for me. And I'm able to say that. Where before I wouldn't wouldn't be able to. Uh, I would be. I was that people pleaser. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Oh, yeah, I can do it. Uh, exactly, right and the, and the reason the reason I'm actually a lot calm is because obviously it's this psychology course I was doing social psychology and it's advanced one where obviously I'm trying to I'm in a bit of a disagreement with the group I'm doing it with as well is the fact that I've did a lot of research into it and it's actually equivalent to having a bachelor degree, but they're saying it's not. But it's like so I'm in a bit of a disagreement with them, but. Normally I rise to it and I get all aggressive, but it's like that's a choice and it's all and I study behaviorism within this, this psychology degree. So it's all about how you react and how you respond to situations. Like obviously Kerry, she tried having uh, arguing with me today, and I'm I'm like I'm not interested. When Wyatt, when Wyatt is crying and he's screaming and he won't shut up, and and when I've tried all things, I'm like no, I'm not interested. It we don't do this enough. 
and he just stops because that's what it is do i admit kerry was struggling last night when i was at university yes she was because he's at that clingy stage where he's all clingy to me no he's a daddy's but, boy oh well it's just as it is but i know what does wind him up which i think will wind a lot of people up is when they're trying to argue with me and i'm like i'm not interested i always say if you want to argue go and argue in a mirror that's what i always say it always winds them up <laughs> well maybe they that's say, when, whatever bugs you is mirroring right and that's what they say exactly. whatever you know whatever is well, this is what i say to the kids all the time like the 10 and 11 and like what tegan always says oh my uh, luke's is winding me up i'm like right okay so my question to you then is his choices and his behavior why are you letting that impact you because in the day why are you letting his choices stop you from living your life loving your life use his choices his negativity as a stepping stone to where you want to be exactly you know sometimes we have to look at the mirror and we have to fix ourselves we have to and yeah. adam that's what you've done is you've looked in the mirror and you fixed yourself and i'm really it was it wasn't quite a fright though <laughs> <laughs> but you have come a long way and i'm really proud of you uh you know uh so we we have a question here about stigma how are we breaking stigma by sharing our stories because obviously if if that's a man that said that well done and i'm proud because at the end of the day there is this, there's still that massive stigma attached to mental health especially with men because men are still being branded we're supposed to be these masculine individuals strong independent defending their family and we are prevented from showing our vulnerability we of obviously the warriors provide that story because then they are doing one thing you, you're getting your voice heard because society don't allow people to be heard when it comes to talking because have you not noticed and this is where i go back to the education is when you're trying to talk especially about how you're feeling the teachers always tell you to shush to shut up you're silenced you should never silence anyone especially a child if they're trying to express how they feel allow them and that's what i said to carrie all the time it's like when you when the child is talking listen because you don't know what they're actually saying because you always have to take a child serious when they're talking always and and that's exactly how it is so you're getting your voice heard so we have another not many places allow that adam we have another question for you have you ever had a child's mental health show on mental health warriors a child's mental health show um we've spoken about children's mental health uh, and the youngest person we've actually had on at the, she, she was 17 years old and i think and she came on last year but you have never had youngest. a show for mental health for the children right no i'd like to know who this person is that's sending these questions um people need to subscribe <laughs> right or just give them and give stream your permission to see your name and then i can i can put your questions in in here uh okay identify yourself well that's the thing right a lot of people are still staying hidden because they don't want to be seen and heard they want they want to ask the questions but they still don't want to be seen you know yeah and a lot of people is because they are living with what? mental health yeah, well, to be honest, to be honest, I'm actually applauding these people because at the end of the day, yes, they don't want to be seen. They don't want to know who's actually asking these questions. But the fact that they're actually taking time to actually ask the questions, I applaud them. And I right. thank them. And these are questions that have never been asked about mental health warriors. Uh, you know, I've never, I, I was I've never been asked these questions ever. You know? 
I, I've never, I've never even thought about the children's mental health because we do have a, a children's mental health uh, service here in Cornwall. And uh, I never, ever thought of something like that on mental health warriors, Adam. It can happen because people say I'm good at what I do. Like you've just said, I'm really good at what I do. Do I believe I can get better at this podcasting? Do I believe I can get better at being here with you, Liz? Of course I can. Of course, can we can all get better? I think I think it's really important that we put it out there because mental health affects not just the elders, not just the everyone. mid age. You know, it affects everyone. You you yes. know, uh, it's a it's a, a chemical imbalance. It's not that you wake up and ooh, I got depression. You know, it's the brain. We got to really start talking. I'm gonna about I'm gonna let, let you know some of when my daughter was being assessed for her educational health care plan to get support in school, we, she had um, independent professionals come out, like not just uh, like come out to, to the house and actually assess her. She was actually diagnosed with anxiety. She was actually diagnosed at 10 years old, being diagnosed with anxiety. That just well, we, shows how how bad this society is. Right? And well, and with everything yeah. that's going on in the world, and if the adults are messed up, how can the children not be, you know? Exactly. Like, we're affected on, on a daily basis. These children are as well. Their mental They're state struggling. went up they and down hurting, yeah. during, during COVID and that in school, out of school, online schooling. You know, there was a lot of trauma that was brought to these children and they didn't understand. Isolation was number one and it increased the suicide numbers as well. Uh, you and me both know that because of the lock, lockdowns, right? Uh, I've lost I'm, I'm going to share some funny surrounding that as well. Like, obviously, I know we've got our views on, on COVID anyway, which I'm not going to share. But the school Lucas was at, obviously, we, 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 he was learning at home, and this particular lesson it was English, and even the school knew he does not like English. He hates it. Obviously, he likes it now, but he hates it. He hated it then. And obviously they put they put him onto this Zoom because they were doing English. Within thirty seconds of that Zoom opening, he closed the laptop. He closed it and he never went back on. Wow. Well, and 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 the learning for the children was a lot harder. Uh, you know, I have a step step granddaughter who's autistic, and she as well struggled with school. Like she, she was, the anxiety was really high. You know, because she didn't understand. Yeah. Because one week she's in school, the next week she's not in school. Then, the, and uh, three months later she's back in school. Then she's not in school. You know. Yeah, I actually saved Lucas's life on, on one upon occasion. Um, why I'm saying that is because obviously um, I took him to school as normal, and um, he was turned away because apparently someone in his class caught this virus, whatever it is, and so he was turned away. He had a mouse, massive meltdown, massive meltdown. And because obviously um, I had no money on me, so I couldn't get a taxi, we, we walked on. We had to go down this big hill, and then at the bottom of that hill was a busy main road, really busy. He tried running into it on multiple occasions, but I stopped him because he was in crisis. So I literally had to sit him on this wall and just, I sat with him and I just held him and calmed him down. And I, did, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Well, you've really calmed yourself down. You've really gotten a lot of patience, Adam. Uh, you know, again, uh -huh. I, I, I highly say everybody go check season three's Adam because it's too oh. different. It's too different. You laugh at me. <laughs> and I can't remember if you had your blue hair when you were on season three. You I never had a blue hair. You had dark hair. You had some kind of you had blue hair, did you not? I've never had blue hair. It must have been jet black. 
Okay, that's what it was. It was jet black. I thought it was blue. I'm colorblind. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> yeah, but but as you can see, I, I am growing my hair. <laughs> so Adam, we have a question here again. Uh, and this is coming from, I'm 67, and I'd like to know about disability discrimination on how mental health warriors helps with that. Ooh, oh, how long have you got? <laughs> we we, we, we like discrimination. Here. What's that? We still got a little a little under half an hour. Now, have you ever seen your chat this active? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really discrimination towards mental health. Well, they, they coexist. People are discriminated all the time. I've been discriminated. My kids have been discriminated because that's that's the type of world it is. But but obviously, I used to, and even Liz knows that when my kids were being discriminated big time, I was forever just jumping on the bandwagon and I was being aggressive to these people. And maybe that was the cause of the fact that I got blocked from talking to the council. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm still blocked now, by the way. But but now I'm now uh, now you just it's just all about how you respond. And there there's this obviously I can sign posture to the um equality advisor service. Um you can talk to uh, citizens advice bureau, you name it. You could talk to Liz, you could talk to us, you could talk, talk to anyone. There's always people out there. Nobody should ever feel isolated. So we have another question. I'm guessing I'm the same person. Do you have a show on disability discrimination? No, but I can. I, I, I feel like I, I should do a, a, a show on disability discrimination. Absolutely. Absolutely, I'm open to that. I am this open is, and to this it. Is how, this is how we make a difference, is by just bringing it to the table, because sometimes we don't have the answers, or sometimes we don't know what the viewers and listeners want to know or have. Uh, you know. And there's so many different forms of disability. I, When I hear the word disability, I always think beautiful and different, because they are individuals who are doing their best to make a difference in what they have to deal with each and every day. Because some disabilities you don't see, like mental health, it's an invisible illness. A lot of people will say, oh, well, you look good. You're, you're dressed up nice. You, you're, everything is fine and dandy. That's not how mental Same health with autism. Works, right? Same with autism. And obviously without sounding age discriminating is the fact that I still remember a few years back, we went to, um, I think it was Blackpool, uh, for the day and obviously we were going to these toilets and th uh, there was obviously disability toilets and obviously we was waiting in the in the line because obviously there was a big line to use it which fair enough no problem and these this elderly couple were saying kids using this they shouldn't they shouldn't there's nothing wrong with them and so we actually said they've got autism autism is a hidden disability and they just walked off which shows it is people it's the, really it's the ignorance like, like, obviously of I, yeah it is the ignorance yes and like for halloween as well um which i find absolutely amazing was the fact that yes there were kids dressed up but then there was this particular kid that showed up with the parents and he wasn't even dressed up which shows that kid could have had autism and also the parent was talking to us about the fact that they deal with autism which shows that kid must have had autism, but we still gave him sweets. Right, because sometimes so the textures, so. because some of the textures bugs them, you know? Yeah, like and, and it's same as well. It's same as well. Uh, like obviously, I, I wasn't being discriminating that night. It's because, obviously, three teenagers, yeah, people always say, like, I've seen the post as well, which really I should have shared, to be honest. Um, three t three teenagers just turned up at the door, and I gave them sweets because, end of the day, people should have gave teenagers sweets. And the reason why is because they could have been doing something else. They could have been taking drugs. They could have been doing antisocial behaviour. They could have been causing all sorts of trouble in the streets. But they chose to come knock on your door and just say those three words. 
Or maybe they were so coming to get I, kids with younger brothers and sisters that couldn't come out because they were sick. See, we don't we don't take our kids trick or treating because obviously it's not safe around our area. It's not safe. And to be honest, they're not bothered. They are not bothered. The fact that they wanted to stay in on their console or watch a Halloween film with with some some as you say candy, but we say sweets. That's okay for us. That's okay for them. It shows the safe. And we give them what they want. Well, I didn't Because we don't just, force them. You just brought up a good point. Watching a movie, you don't have to go trick-or-treating on Halloween. There's different ways of celebrating. No. It's like Christmas. It's like Easter. You can celebrate it a different way. You know? Exactly. Exactly. But, but I have to mention, Liz, I have to mention the upcoming show on the Warriors is... I'm at, I was actually in the in the middle of creating the show, you know, uh, before I came on. We're actually talking about triggers around bonfire nights because obviously bonfire is Sunday, and and obviously Wyatt is he's actually scared of fireworks. It's come to terms that every time people have been letting off fireworks and the loud ones, he jumps and they keep him up. So do I believe we're in for a bad night on Sunday? Yes, we are. But but obviously we can just comfort him as much as we can. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be discussing triggers around bonfire nights. And we've got an amazing guest. Well, and it doesn't only just affect little ones; it affects the adults because anybody living with PTSD and animals and animals too. You know, uh, it really it really does affect them because it it triggers you, right? It's it's that trigger. Mm. Uh, you know, for me, I don't like loud bangs. I don't like when somebody slams something because I'm like, oh, oh what what's going on here? Um, you know, uh, it brings me a lot backwards, uh, you know, to yes. certain situations and that, that. thunder. I hate thunder. If anybody who is watching and they want to know what Miss Liz is scared of, Miss Liz is scared of thunder. I will watch I lightning thunder. and thunder shower, but I don't like the thunder because the thunder reminds me of my parents fighting. Do you want to know how risky I am when it comes to thunder? Oh, I don't know. How risky are you? I'm very risky. Uh, when the kids were in school, um, obviously just down the street, there's this big open field and it was thundering and lightning. It was raining the lot. And I, obviously me and Kerry was walking down. Well, obviously Kerry was more running. But me, uh, she was running down this big open field and there's me, metal fences. I was going... <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing that all along, and as well, um, when it's thunder and lightning, I actually went for a shower as well in in a thunderstorm. This is how risky I am because life's about taking risks. I don't know. That's a little too risky, there, Adam. <laughs> well, you know what I'm like. You don't. You you die once, but you live every day. That's the new saying. You don't just live once. You live every day. You die once. Yeah. So, Adam, I want to ask you, if I give you the letter TEA, what three words are you going to give me today for your T? I was going to, I was about to say troublemaker then, but no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> T, I'm going to say um, time. Definitely time. E. Energy, air, awareness, and maybe acceptance as well. Okay, I want to know why you gave me those three words. Four, because you gave me four. Take time is because we've all got time. We have all got time to manifest into something we want to be. If people say you have not got time for this or not got time for that, then you're just full of excuses. Because end of the day, we've all got time because you're here, you're living, you're breathing. And either way, if you haven't got time, make time. Even if it's just for five minutes or 10 minutes, go meditate, go for a walk, go and read a book, do something that you love. Do some diamond darts because that's what we've been doing which I thought I'd never do. E, energy. 
we are energy. We're not just human beings. We are energy. And everything we do gives out energy. If you get, get if you wake up positive, then your day is going to be positive. It's all about energy. A, awareness and acceptance, because at the end of the day, it's time to accept. Yes, we've got mental health. And it's time to manifest mental illness into mental wellness. All through the power of awareness. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That's an amazing tea and a completely different tea than what you gave me the first time you were on Tea Times. And that's what it is. I can't remember what I said last time. Well, then I guess you're going to have to go and watch your episode on season three. Oh, right? I haven't got time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you do. We all have time. You just said. I know. I know. So, Adam, what is your favorite color? Blue. Why? It's actually baby blue because in the day, um, obviously, I know there's two types of calendars. Um, but obviously, I know I normally go off the lunar calendar, but this particular calendar within Brainwash, I believe, I'm Pisces. And Pisces is the power of the ocean. So, and we know it's a baby blue colour. And I just, I just love water. So are you big into astro uh, the astronomes? Like A astrology, yeah, I'm into all that, yeah. Did you so not know? What? No, that's something I did not know. So Yeah, what, what I'm into you... astrology. Yeah, so um I've like noticed with the lunar calendar, um, I'm actually a Libra. No, oh no, a Leo. Leo, sorry. Yeah. So what is it that you like about it? Because for some people, some people are not into it. I am. I'm a Taurus. And uh, I'm also uh, the year of, what the, I think it's the year of the tiger, if I remember right. My mind is kind of foggy right now. I, I like astrology because at the end of the day, it's definitely linked to energy. And it's actually helped me to um, bring bring me back to where I am. Like, obviously, like going back, normally when the kids are arguing and they're fighting and they're screaming at us, I used to rise to them. I did. I used to rise to them. But but then I just closed my eyes while they were screaming at me. And I just had this voice saying, get outside. Just get outside. And that's what I did. I, and I sat on the garden swing outside and just grounded myself to the floor. Barefoot, you name it, I did it. So Adam, we have another question here for you. Can you name all of the shows that are on Mental Health Warriors? All the shows? Yes, we've got mine and the two Andreas. Um, we're every Fridays. We're called Warriors of Attraction. We've got Stephen Smith's His Is Every Mondays. His Is uh, LWN Life with Nature, which obviously it's a sunset daybreaker. Uh, we've got Annette Chappies. She's obviously currently a Wednesday every two weeks. But obviously, she's going to change that, which obviously I don't know yet. Hers is Power Hour of Self Care. Um, we've got Nancy's coming where I can't think what that's called again. Oh, yeah, Finding Your Joy. That's what it's called. And, um, and that's it. So, Adam, in, how long has Mental Health Warriors been running for? Three and a half years. Wow. Since since July. Since since July um twenty twenty. So are you having a big anniversary on your fourth year? Of course. We actually got an anniversary coming up anyway because we're close to our seven hundred show. Awesome. Seven hundred YouTube video. So again, 700. Adam, you're bringing up something good. So if anybody would like to reach you, I do have the YouTube channel up for a reason because I'm helping Adam to try and get it up to 1,000 subscribers so yeah. that it can be monetized to help Adam as well because Adam and his wife pay for all of this uh, platform. They have no help, no support. So it's all volunteers. So that's why we have the YouTube channel up here. But Adam, you also have other platforms that they can reach you. I'm going to put them up. You have Facebook. Um, let me get Facebook. 
So you have the Facebook MH Warriors page. Yeah, the men the Men's Health Warrior private group. Yes. Then you have the the public group. No, we've all, we've only got just one group now. The private group. We got rid of the community group. Oh, got rid of it. Okay, so let's not let's not put that up too much then. Yeah, no, we, we've got we've got the private group. We've got the Facebook page. Uh, we've got YouTube, we've got Instagram, uh, which is MH Warrior 2020. Um, and we're actually finally back on Twitter. They've actually, after three years, they've allowed me back on Twitter. <laughs> oh my God, he got out of the Twitter jail. After three years. <laughs> I'll have to find a Twitter. I did not know that you were back on Twitter. I've just wrote it down. And you yeah, we're fi we're finally back on it. We're finally back on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have LinkedIn as well. Uh, We've got LinkedIn. Yes, yes, yeah. And you had the WordPress. Do you still have the WordPress, Adam? Uh, we still got Linktree. Yeah. Oh yeah, the link tree. I gotta find that. I will put that all. In How the dare you forget that? I forgot the. Link How tree. dare you? <laughs> that's that's the Canada in it. I forgot the link. <laughs> How dare you? But it's all right because I don't publish it either. <laughs> so, Adam, for the viewers out there and listeners, if you would like them to take part in mental health warriors, how would you like their support? Um, just tune in. Absolutely tune in. Share, subscribe, drop a comment. Because in the day, it doesn't matter if you're tuning live or or on a replay. We still love you. And end of the day, your views matter. Like we're not like these big podcasts that I want like ten thousand videos in a day. We're not like that. We don't care if one. Two, ten, ten thousand, hundred thousand tuning in. We don't care all at once. If we can just help that one person, that makes us happy. It only takes one person. Result. That's all it takes. One person. One person starts a ripple effect. Exactly. So, Adam, what has Mental Health Warriors done for yourself? Changed my life. Have you not noticed? How? <laughs> How? Because it's actually got me to communicate and to connect with people all over the world. Not, yeah, just all over the world, and I'm loving it. Well, if it wasn't for the Warriors, I wouldn't know you. Well, thanks a lot. You could still turn tune into Tea Time. I'm all over. What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, um, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you know me? I'm not hiding. I'm over here tapping away and saying, look at me, look at me. I'm here serving tea. So, uh, Adam, I really want to thank you for joining me and sharing. I want to get a couple of things out before we go. Uh, so the updates, before we wrap up, what are the updates again for viewers that are just tuning in? The update updates on what the Warriors or me? Both. Okay, the Warriors is we've got new shows upcoming. Uh, obviously, Stevens already started. He's already done two shows. He's every Mondays, uh, which is about eleven o'clock um, UK time in the morning. Uh, we've got Nancy. She's starting in a couple of weeks. I think it's a th yeah the uh, the thirteenth of November. That's when she's kicking off. Uh, that would be an evening UK where it's 8 p.m. UK. Uh, obviously, we're just we're just all about it. We know Elizabeth's going to be signing her show next year. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, but yeah, we're just all about just keeping going, keeping going, keeping busy. So it's all about. And personal updates. Personal is um, I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm living life, loving life, uh, live life, love. That's what I, that's my motto. Live life, love. Um, and obviously got a new baby. He's he's obviously ten weeks old tomorrow. Where he's I know time's flown. I know I, how I've still got her. I really don't know. 
And I don't know how it's still letting me grow it. Um, yeah, just all about that. Ten weeks already? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and he He's really looks like tomorrow. And he really looks like you, Adam. It's like a little mini Adam. I'm just like, oh my goodness, look at him. He looks like his daddy. Yeah, well, he's, um, I've still got a lot of teaching to do with him. Kerry well, thinks he's weeks, gonna turn. A break. <laughs> no, Kerry, Kerry thinks he's gonna turn exactly like me, act like me, and stuff like that. Uh, could you handle another me in the world? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I should be asking Kerry that. Can Kerry handle another you? <laughs> <laughs> so adam i've seen somewhere on your facebook you and carrie getting married next year of course yeah next year what's the date carrie's got that very very convenient we actually got the day booked on her birthday 16th of november oh, well look at that a winter wedding it, yeah it is going to be a winter wedding isn't it yeah, we, we've actually got a theme as well. So what's your theme? Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, I was looking at that to do my Christmas tree this year. Oh, you wasn't. Yeah, I was. <laughs> oh, well, um, yeah, it's, it, it is. It's, it is. No, um, Tegan's got a jumper. Uh, like, like she got a jumper, which I'll see, you'll probably call a sweater. And it's actually got Jack Skeleton on it. Oh. She's got one. Um, I'll try and find it. I'll send you a picture. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do for Christmas this year. Because every year my Christmas tree is always different. And I, oh, I we're basically looking half at that yesterday, right? And my, my son was like, Mom, why don't you just do skeletons and stuff like that? And I was like, oh, the nightmare. But I can, uh, one of the, another update is the fact that we've never done it before. But this month, we're actually going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. You guys celebrate in November in England, right? UK, UK don't celebrate it. We don't celebrate it, but this year, um, Andrea Mason's actually sent me and Kerry a challenge that we have to celebrate Thanksgiving this year, so we're, we're going to do it. Are you doing it on the United States America, Thanksgiving Day? Uh, we're going for the 20, 26th, 27th. Yeah, I think that's their Thanksgiving. Us in Canada, we have it in October. All right, yeah, yeah so we're going for the States, Bob. Yeah, our Thanksgiving is in October. I know in the United States it's in November. That's pretty cool. Come on, Liz. They've all just started bringing the turkeys out in, in supermarkets. Well, there's turkeys all year round over here in Canada. There isn't here. Really? 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 Wow. They've all just started bringing them out now. Well, obviously, I, I went to my local Iceland, and I'm, tr I'm trying to get one for, like, £25. But obviously, the only ones I can find are an eight pound one, uh, eight pound really small giant. I'm, like, I'm not getting that. Yeah, they're they're around all the time. We have wild turkeys that run around in the ditches and everything. We just go. And... <laughs> we we're, we're turkey people. <laughs> we eat turkey. <laughs> we need to move to Canada then. <laughs> yeah, we eat turkey about four or five times a year. I... And it's a yeah, really stuffy bird, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my you youngest okay. my youngest actually shoots them. Like, I'm just like, ugh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, well, I want to thank you, Adam, for joining me on Tea Time. And I want to thank all the viewers and listeners and subscribers. I want Without all of you guys, Tea Time would not be able and wouldn't be possible. Uh, I want to thank Adam for joining me today and giving me some amazing updates. I want to thank Adam for being himself, the new Adam, because Adam has changed. He's still goofy. He's still and he's still himself. But I mean, he has grown and he has changed. And I'm really proud of you, Adam, for doing that. Is your uh, grown? <laughs>
<laughs> and I will be back at 3 p.m. to this afternoon for the second tea time, and then at 7 p.m. for the last tea time of this week on November 2nd. And then I'll be back and do it all over again next Thursday. So this afternoon we have DD Banks Johnson coming in, and she'll be talking about perspective and ego. And then tonight we're going to be talking about suspense, thriller, chocolates, and forbidden love, Chocolate. mystery. We're going to be talking about all of it when Ashley Ur Ur Early is going to be joining me and she'll be talking about her new book called Hearts of Skulls. So we'll be doing that tonight at 7 p.m. Until then, I will see everybody at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the second tea time.